John Bednarski. I'm a section manager at the Metropolitan Water District. And right now I'm on assignment with the Design and Construction Enterprise. It's a new entity that has been formed by the Department of Water Resources in California to oversee the design and construction of the California Water Fix, the new conveyance facilities to bring water from the Sacramento River uh, down to the pump stations in the south of the Delta. The Delta is located in Northern California, just south of Sacramento, and it forms the, what we call the water hub for California. We have inflows from the Sacramento River and the San Joaquin River, both flow through the Delta. And through that location, water is diverted to a series of pump stations at the south portion of the Delta. And from there, the water is exported to Southern California and to Central California. Well, the purpose of the California Water Fix is really to fix a deteriorating, deteriorating water system in California. Uh, presently, the water flows through a series of man-made channels and canals as it makes its way from the north part of the delta to the south. Um, the levees that hold back the water, many of them were built over 100 years ago and are in questionable um, states of condition. So the plan with this program is to uh, basically bypass the surface deliveries through a series of tunnels and pump stations to bring the water directly from the Sacramento River underneath the delta and then deliver it to these pump stations in the south. So with the main tunnels, there's 60 miles of 40-foot ID tunnel, and then in the north there's approximately 10 miles more of tunnel. So a total of 70, over 70 miles of tunnel altogether. Certainly for the state of California, it will be the largest tunneling project that we've undertaken. The overall program budget is $14.9 billion, of which nearly $7 billion is for the tunnel's construction. The tunneling portions of the project involve a series of tunnels at the north part of the project. We call them the north tunnels. These are the smaller diameter tunnels, ranging anywhere from 20 to 28 feet. And then in the southern portion of the project, which we refer to as the main tunnels, those will be the 40-foot inside diameter tunnels, which will be the main conveyance. Those will be twin bore tunnels paralleling each other for about 30 miles. Uh, we're expecting the contractors will use about a 45-foot um, diameter TBM um, to uh, mine the tunnels. We're going to use a single pass lining system. It'll be a segmental concrete liner. Um, we're anticipating right now about nine pieces in the ring. That would include the key piece also. And we're looking at different design approaches to those segmental liners. Uh, the present time, the tunnels will be situated about 150 feet below the ground level. Uh, water surface elevation is basically at the ground level, so we'll have about 150 feet or almost four and a half bar of pressure at the bottom of the tunnel. We're expecting at this point that we'll have 10 to 12 tunnel boring machines going at the same time. Based on the limited geotechnical information we have at this point in time, we're expecting that an EPB technology will be utilized. Uh, with further geotechnical investigation, may reveal some areas where we have a lot of sands and gravels. We haven't found that to date, but if those are in, um, uncovered in certain reaches, then contractors may select to use maybe perhaps a slurry machine. Right now, the way we've configured the project is a typical large tunnel drive will be about eight miles. That would make eight large shafts on the main tunnels, and then another four to five on the smaller diameter um, tunnel, tunnel bores. Access is limited. It's in an agricultural area. We'll need to upgrade roads. We'll need to bring in power. It's also going to have to be site stabilization that takes place because the shafts will be constructed on ground that is basically made out of peat materials. We're also planning to procure significant acreage to allow us to stockpile the tunnel muck as we feel that there is a potential for a beneficial use for reusing that material elsewhere in the delta, perhaps for reinforcing levees or other restoration type work that might take place. I think there was a very extensive environmental document because at the time this was linked to a, a much larger project and recently they decided to basically bifurcate what we called the BDCP, Bay Delta Conservation Plan, into two separate programs. One is the Cal Water Fix, which addresses the physical facilities. The se second aspect of that is the California Eco Restore, which is now on a separate track to restore up to 30,000 acres of degraded habitat in the Delta. We have completed the conceptual engineering for the program. There's an EIR um, and an EIS, so part state, part federal. Our plan right now is to recirculate portions of the environmental impact report, EIS, um, receive the final input from the public and other interested stakeholders 
finalized those documents in spring of 2016 and then proceed into preliminary design after that point in time.